gonna settle in for a long film study. Might as well have some coffee. Wyatt gets the ball. Wyatt back to throw. Wyatt look. Myers toward the end zone. Pass it. Oh, of course, touchdown by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler, Jack. This video is brought to you by Mississippi Land Bank. Land Bank! Visit them online at mslandbank.com. And by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance and your local Farm Bureau Insurance agents. Go with the home team. This is something that I have not done uh, yet. This will be the first time I've done this, and that is take a whole bunch of plays from the first half and a whole bunch of plays from the second half and kind of divide them. This is the Mississippi State-Auburn game. I felt like Auburn dominated in the truest sense of the word the first 25 minutes of the game. And then the game completely flipped, just completely turned on a dime, and then Mississippi State dominated, in the truest sense of the word, the last 35 minutes of the game. So let's start off with some stuff in the first half of how it was going and how Auburn built the lead. First play of the game, big pass play. Okay, here's the first play of the ball game, and uh, it's gonna be a big pass play. Kind of set the tone for the early part of the game. They'll go to a two receiver side, and get an end break. It's kind of like a post off play action. Really, it's like a post behind an end break right there in the middle of the field and hits him running in just all kinds of room first play of the game. So when you back it up and look, look at design, you don't see the whole field in the TV copy, but this is an example of what Auburn's doing. Tight end on the line of scrimmage in protection. So the tight end plus the five lineman, you got six man protection versus what's going to be a five-man rush. So you've already got him outnumbered on protection, which is a reason why uh, he's so clean in the pocket. And the other thing is, State's in man uh, responsibilities here with a free safety back here in the middle of the field, and this linebacker is going to have that back. So this free safety uh, back here in the middle of the field is kind of who this is playing off of. And what happens is the uh, receiver on the slot runs an in break and ties up the safety. So even though he's got a man, he holds that safety right in there. And so when the read comes back, he just sees one on one. And this corner has, you know, uh, dropped back here, Forbes has, and given up the underneath throw to make sure he doesn't give up the deep throw. So there you see clean pocket. Anytime a quarterback can sit back there and do this after a play fake. It's going to be hard to stop them, you know. Then it's a matter of somebody getting open. You don't, you don't get any penetration on the on the front. It's six man protection versus a five man rush. He's got all day back there to survey. And when the ball is completed, uh, one is you see the distance. This is too much space right here. Uh, I th it seems like I remember maybe a little stumble here when I was watching it live down the field. But anyway, there's so much separation in space. You can also see what was happening. The route came in here. It tied up the safety in the middle and brought him in. That's who actually makes the tackle. But uh, all this space and all this running room after completion on the first play of the ball game sort of set the tone. Back and punch this in for the first touchdown. Zoning it back here, backside. Guys walked up on the edge, so it's a clear give for the quarterback. And what State's doing is actually trying to twist uh, right here where the run is going to go. So it kind of creates, be, because that's their stunt, it almost goes ahead and kind of creates a little um, gap right there on the line of scrimmage, right where the ball is going to go. Because you got a twist call right there. It's just, and they run right into it. Uh, running back, I'm sorry, linebacker Brule steps in, but is getting driven across. And so he's going to cut behind him. And once that happens, he's clear to the three steps in there, and that's going to be hard to stop him from getting in and first touchdown. So they're going to motion across and then bring him back out, RPO this, and uh, come back to the screen. It goes for a touchdown. I'll show you what I think's going on. There's the motion. So on the snap, it's you know two over two in a man look, and also a man look because you've you know motioned here. So presumably if it's man, he would have him in man. And you're reading this, okay? So this is zone blocking back that way and intentionally leaving the in-man line of scrimmage unblocked. I believe quarterback starting his read right there. So we're not going to block him. And if he were to come up field uh, vertical or stay out, we might give the run back into the boundary right here. But if he sort of shuffles inside or slams down inside on the run, quarterback's now going to pull this and take it to the next read, which is that first – you know, outside, right there, reading him. That's the second read. And, you know, if he stays in, we're going to throw it out here to the screen because then you got two-on-two two blocking, and that's exactly uh, what happens. So watch the first read, 
as he's going to look at Charlton there at defensive end. He shuffles down in. Now the quarterback's going to pull. Now you pull it on the RPO. Next read is right here, and it's pretty obvious what's happening is he's looking at quarterback. I'm going to keep the quarterback from running the ball. And so now his next read is go ahead and, you know, it's a lateral, so it goes as a run play because uh, you're throwing it backwards, but give it to him, and now we got two on two. If if he had come running out here in a man to man responsibility to cover, you know, this guy, then the quarterback's then going to keep this and run the football, uh, most likely. But because he stayed QB, you flip it out, and now the blocks are happening. One in front to get him to the next, one on the outside got him pushed off right there, and now it's a foot race, and he wins it to the end zone. And so uh, 14-3, just like that. Just bang, bang, it's 14-3 to really quickly. And you're like, okay, State's got to dig in quick or this thing's going to get away from them on the road just like it did in 2019 when they were down like 24 to nothing after the first quarter and never got back in it. And it was feeling that way in the first half of the ball game. Here's an inside zone run out of the pistol for Auburn that's just going to bust it and kind of show you some of the gaps in the line of scrimmage they were creating in the early part of the game. Uh, look at that hole. Um, I mean, he's to the free safety before anybody gets a finger on him. And it's an example. Auburn was more physical in the line of scrimmage, and State was more taking on blocks than creating problems. So if you were to look at linebacker, linebacker, and these two defenders here on the defensive front, you got four in that box, that's that's where this run is coming. Is that these four defenders, you know, in the box? Really, only three of them are in there because uh, fourteen. Uh, Nathaniel Watson is a little removed from the box out here, but he's going to get down in there, and they block it with center, left guard, left tackle, and tight end comes over and has that wham block on the inside zone. So, not to spend too much time on it, but I'll just kind of show you if you look at those players coming left. So on the snap, center takes the nose. They're slanting that way, so he just uses that leverage and pushes him completely out of the play. right? And then left guard and left tackle are up looking to combo linebacker. And it works because, again, defense is going that way. You've got uh, Jet Johnson stepping that way, so the left guard hits him, and now the tackle come, is able to come off and pin back the next linebacker, and there's your hole right there in the middle. Uh, you'll see that kind of happening. The two linebackers get split. And the other thing is, too, if you look, the the wham block from the tight end right here or the H-back coming across, and he winds up on the ground, but he doesn't really have to block him because you're kind of stepping around it and you're not closing that out right there. You see what I mean? So kind of looking to see what's going to happen. And, and rightfully so. I mean, this defensive end has contained – and if you get a naked bootleg and pull, that quarterback is kind of his responsibility coming out of there, too. So he's got to stand in there and take the block, but he's got to be able to see what's happening. And so those are your four uh, blocks. Center on the nose, left guard on the linebacker, uh, tackles turning back on linebacker, and end is removed. And now you got a hole right there in the middle. And so it's kind of reading and looking and not enough just knocking people out of the way there on the defensive front. And that's what I think State came back and changed in the ball game. Okay, third touchdown of the ball game for Auburn. They're going to get and that's uh, tight end who's a single receiver on that side, not covered. He's out. They're going to get him out in the route and then the, the one on the right, the receiver who's standing up on the right. Everybody else is going to show run block and they sell it really well. But it's only two out in the route. Uh, off the play action, the, the purpose of that is obviously to get people stepping up, looking run, because you want to get free release on the backside tight end of the back of the end zone, and then you want to get free release front side right here and have two options, front side, back side, um, when that quarterback comes off that fake. They sell it well, too, because both of the other eligible receivers, tight end and slot receiver, are both selling run, also blocking, only two coming out in the route. So what winds up being play side over here to the left of the defense gets drawn up on the fake. And and as soon as he comes off the fake, you can already see he's open in the back. State does a halfway decent job, actually, of turning to try to get back there and get underneath the route. But the run was sold too much, and he's got the vantage point. Now you can see it working. That's Peters. You know, you actually saw him uh, check the safety right there. Once he sees pass, you know, it's it's not terrible. One good thing is you're trying to recover here in time to make a play even though he's open. And he's going to check. You'll see Peters look to his right over his shoulder right here. 
right there to see where's where's the receiver. And because he's on the back line of the end zone, he can't see him. And he doesn't know to retreat back to him right now. As soon as his eyes come off the quarterback, the ball's coming out, and you're just too late getting back there. So nice design and execution by Auburn. Okay, Auburn with another drive and a touchdown here on a fade one-on-one. Made it 28-3. to And uh, their design, you know, motioning or sprinting out to empty. Going to have three blockers in front of a screen call to that side, depending on what you get. And here I think they're checking uh, this to a, um, a go because you're getting zero coverage. What I mean by that is uh, you got empty, so only five men in protection. And State is five on line of scrimmage and bringing a sixth. So State is bringing more than they can block, so he's got to throw it quickly. And he's either got to go to the screen here where it's going to be three on four. Uh, well, really four on four because the safety is running over here to cover him in man or just take this one-on-one -on -one fade down here in the boundary. So State going zero coverage, which means zero safeties, no help. Bring in more than they can block. They pick up the five, but the sixth is the linebacker from the next level who is free to the quarterback. And then the end actually comes free too. They don't block Sherman Timms on the front, but he gets it out because he's reading hot and uh, it's an excellent one-handed catch. It's not poor coverage. If you go back, he sort of beat him on the release right here, but Emerson's in pretty good position off the line of scrimmage. It's just a perfect throw, and he's got his arm across trying to knock the ball away. Again, it's not a terrible position at all by the corner. It's just a perfect throw and an outstanding one-handed catch uh, down here in the shadows by the Auburn receiver. All right, so you're down 28-3. to three. You got the football with two and a half minutes left until halftime, and it's fourth down. So you decide to go for it on your own, I'm sorry, on the Auburn 40-yard line. And it just feels like this was an important play, obviously, in a conversion that, that really made a difference in the ball game. They're going to hit Austin Williams in the slot. You know, if you look, fourth down and four, and they put two backs in the backfield. And so what that does, I think, is it, it shifts those safeties over and makes them a little closer together you know, on that hash with maybe the thinking that they've got to be careful to make sure they don't stay close together if this thing gets split out wide if you run verticals, right? So, you know, I don't mind the formation one bit, and you're just going to get a straight vertical release. He's going to push up between those two safeties and stop, and he's responsible for finding a throwing lane somewhere past the sticks for the quarterback. And off of his route, Polk on the outside is going to push up and threaten that safety right there where he's got to be honest because that safety were to jump down on it, you may get a throw all the way up the field. It happens really quick, so by the time the ball is completed, they're pretty close together. But it's a good timing throw, and he jams it in there before either of those safeties. They're closing down on it, but that's what I'm talking about. If, you know, if they jumped it early, Polk's going to have a chance to run right by, and we might throw it up the field. At the time that he makes the decision to throw the ball, they're kind of sagging back there enough to give you this throwing lane between the linebackers, and it's just, you know, uh, nice timing throwing catch. And a good job by Will Rogers to to throw it in there. Auburn uh, did what they had been doing. They're just rushing three. They're playing zone underneath with two safeties on top of it. So five underneath, just like cover two zone right there. You can see that that it's zoned the way that they allow Heath to release and go inside. Nobody runs with him, and that would you know take this away, that check down to the back, make you throw it in the middle of the field. And again, I'm looking at Austin Williams' route. He's past the linebacker. He finds the opening. Rodgers knows he's got him right now. He's watching those safeties. If he doesn't throw it in there on the timing like this, he's going to have time to step up in the pocket and decide, can I get a first down late, jamming it in here to this crosser, or you know, do we – extend the play and hit him and give him a chance but because you've got that continuity with the receiver just drive it in there right now and that play that fourth down conversion and throw I felt like kind of got him going I believe this is the very next play you get a little hitch um, screen look here pump fake it and then hit Jameer Calvin down here in this hole shot before the cover two safety can get over the top and Will you know sees the two safeties snap of the ball Nice pump fake right there. You know, I watched these two defensive backs that, you know, one is the corner, one is the underneath defender right there. I watched them. And I don't even know that they're affected by the pump fake because I don't know that they ever looked at the quarterback. I, I felt like both defenders are looking out at receivers, see the stop, and both jump on it without even the necessity of the pump fake. Um, 
even with that pump fake, the safety is still sort of back. You know, he's not flying upfield. And so this is going to be a timing and, and accuracy deal here to get it into Calvin. And Rodgers pulls it up, and boom. As soon as he clears, uh, the safety ball's coming out. Good timing. Puts it on the outside. Makes sure it's on him before the safety can get there. And this is – uh, one where a receiver's making this look easy. Yeah, you're expected to catch this and get a foot down every time, but when you got a safety bearing down on you, some guys will take their eyes off of it, get the ball knocked out. Excellent job to catch it, get a foot in, and now you're in business. And so this first touchdown is going to be back here in the back of the end zone. You can't see the whole route because of the camera, tight camera angle, but State's going to motion in here. Uh, with a receiver and mesh. Okay, I believe that's Austin Williams who's going to mesh at the goal line with the inside receiver here. It's a mesh concept. And what you're going to have is push up to the back and, you know, across a vertical there. And outside, Makai Polk on the outside who you can't see, it's more of a just sort of that um, – it's not even really a, a a slant. It's just, you know, more of that in-break skinny – to the back of the end zone right there. Just kind of an angle route that's on the back side of this mesh. And Will Rogers, you know, I don't know exactly how they tell him to read it. You're getting a four-man rush as opposed to a three, and, and that's because they don't need that extra defender back here because you get the back line of the end zone. But what I feel like probably is the read is, you know, that safety, if nobody's going to drop back here in the back of the end zone and take away the throws that are back there, two of them in the back of the end zone from outsides, then you pretty much already know that's where we may go with the football. Uh, you know, if he comes up or if he runs across with this, you know, the inside of the end break on the mesh, um, if it's some sort of man call or if that gets his attention. And that's kind of what happens. Now, again, this is all happening off screen. So here goes that angle route to the back, mesh coming across the end break. And you'll see that defender who's the, the next inside of the corner is going to run in here, right? This one's running out to chase the back. And so because of that, it's sort of already clearing this. And it, it looks cluttered to me, but they've worked on this enough, and Will Rogers already sees it happening. Look how quickly he's getting rid of the ball right now. Already getting the football out, putting it in the back of the end zone where everybody else has chased the mesh. And you wonder, okay, well, what if he didn't get this throw in there with what they're running defensively, only rushing for? What would you do? And I think, you know, the protection is going to hold up. It's five on four, and as long as it does – Williams is going to come over the top of the mesh and come over here and find a throwing lane on the goal line. Calvin's going to come underneath. It's zones. Nobody's chasing him, so he's going to find some throwing lane here on the underneath part of the mesh. You might have that opportunity if you continue. You see what I mean? If the ball didn't come out in the back, you got a chance here. You got a chance here to find him backside. Protection holds up. You got a chance here to maybe get a one on one because it is first and goal. But again, because uh, mesh came here, next defender inside of that. To angle route right on the outside ran across. It just opened it up one on one, and they hit this more than one once on a mesh type play down here for a touchdown. First one got them going. That's uh, made it a 28 10 game. And there you see they're giving you that inside, um, well, not giving it to you. I, I shouldn't say giving it. This is one where the corner actually is kind of head up and just to the inside. And, you know, you go, well, what if teams were to turn in and just totally, you know, try to take away the, the inside release and make you go outside? What would you do? You know, would you work through it and try to run the same? Or would you adjust and go ahead and take the fade? And that's the danger here with an offense that is as proficient as, as State is at running, you know, that route. You look where the G is or so where the numbers are. This is an outside receiver that after the motion is well inside the numbers – with all kind of room to try to run the fade to the back corner if you choose to. So it makes it really tough on corners and, and defensive coaches based on personnel to decide, do we give an inside release? Do we want to take away outside release down here on the goal line? Okay, keep an eye on Nathan Pickering right here. This is before halftime. Auburn's driving down to try a field goal before half, and he's going to you know, beat the center and get to the quarterback for the first sack of the game for State. And I feel like this was a play that started to really make a difference in that this was well before Nix actually was injured in the game, but it seemed to take the edge off the Auburn offense. And and it was the first time that State started getting the upper hand defensively and physically. And right there, you know, it's a four-man rush against five – or actually six protection with the back staying in. But it sort of singles up the center on Nathan Pickering, and he just absolutely whips him 
goes underneath, gets his hands up high, gets him on his heels off balance, gets rid of the hold, and now he's free to the quarterback. Quarterback couldn't go anywhere because Crumity uh, was winning physically here off the edge too. But you know, again, you can see this. If this all happens and Pickering isn't here, he's going to step up and either run or make an easy throw. So it was a big play, and by getting to him, after this play, some things started to change a little bit. A, a little bit of accuracy went away on a couple of throws, and just State started getting the upper hand physically. That pressure, that sack, that hit on the quarterback from Nathan Pickering, I think you can point back to that. Something changed with that moment. Now, yes, State had scored, cut it to 18, but Auburn still had the ball with time to go score. At the very least, get a field goal attempt right. And when he got that sack, something sort of just felt like it was changing in the stadium where all of a sudden State's defense got confidence. And a hit on the QB did take a little bit of the edge off of Bo Nix's accuracy in the pass game on the next couple of throws. Okay, so right after that, Auburn comes in here and against a three-man rush and cover two, they're going to have a chance to hit a, an open uh, dig at 15-20 in the middle of the field. But you go back to that rush. This is after getting sacked. They're dropping one off the line and only rushing three guys. Pickering goes, you know, um, that gap on the outside shoulder left guard and ties up guard and tackle because you're running a twist with Charlton to come back in. So you've hit him and now you're collapsing this pocket again with a three-man rush. Now, he, Nix does a nice job with the read right here, but because, again, you're collapsing the pocket, you hit him once, he can't step into that throw clearly, a little bit of you know physical presence finally on the line of scrimmage is making a difference, and you get a ball just out in front of a receiver. And um, you, know, you can see what's happening right here. State has uh, two safeties deep, it's a cover two look. They're going here, tie up one on the inside, and in-break dig off of him and trying to get in that hole between their dropping linebackers. And he's in there. I saw after the play, Nick's uh, say to this receiver, run, like he felt like he may have come out of his break and kind of held up right there, wanted to run into that deal. But you didn't have time to really survey anything because you're getting pressure. And again, just before half, some of this pressure seemed to change the whole game for State's defense. Okay, and this is what I'm talking about on third and 18 here with 23 seconds left to the ha uh, half. And you can see what State's doing is we're going to drop everybody deep, keep you in front of us on third and 18, and give you an underneath completion. And Auburn kind of knows that. When they're going empty here, they're going to run four guys off and bring the fifth underneath and just get some of this yardage back for the field goal attempt and try to you know get it to 31 before half. And this is what I'm talking about. You hit him, you pressure him, and now on third down, three-man rush, there's no one around the QB. But getting people around in previous plays may affect the accuracy right here. Again, this is before Nick's got hurt. And a guy that's open underneath, you're going to get a play with a chance to have yards and, and, and you know get an easy field goal attempt, but you throw it behind him. And I think it's the pressure and the hits from the previous plays that probably leads to that. And then that leads to a longer field goal that they miss. And it just felt like State created momentum going into the halftime locker room. 18-point game at halftime. State down 28-10, getting the ball to start the third quarter. And beginning on that possession to begin the second half, State scored on five consecutive possessions. So we know that State dominated offensively in the second half. And this is an early example in the second half, early third quarter here on this scoring drive where the pass protection is key. And I thought this was the biggest part of what State was doing, was winning the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. So without even paying attention to the route, you look at what is happening here, and, and they get a lot of this for everybody they play, uh, including in the game against Auburn. That's three-man rush right here. So just look at the kind of time against the dropping zone coverage that Will Rogers is going to get. You know, people have said um, that this right here was an obvious hold, on cross when a guy turns around. Now, a lot of times when the guy turns around and stops, they get hooked. Now, what you hope is his arm is underneath his arm, and they're actually taught to do that. This time his arm's on top, but the guy stops, and so it's just it's not going to get called right there. Um, it's not really a hold once he turns his back and just kind of quits. But there's nowhere to go. He's locked up by a first-round tackle. You know, you look at the job the center is doing, and you look at the job the right tackle Lashley is doing, and a quarterback that has this kind of time is going to find somebody and make something happen. 
escapes, and it's a running back who gets behind that underneath zone for a catch. And this is one where it's a little pick route, rub route play for a touchdown here to Jameer Calvin down here on this side, and it really shouldn't happen because I think you get kind of a mix-up in your protection and a free blitzer right off the edge of the line of scrimmage. Nobody picks him up right in the face of the quarterback, but he still steps into it and throws a touchdown. Uh, you'll see the guy come off the edge. He's free. He still throw it accurately for a touchdown. I say accurately, but it's a heck of a catch because it's behind him a little bit. Um, but you see what's working right here is pre-snap. I mean, it's really obvious, okay, pre-snap, that this is man. And there's nobody uh, helping, and especially if this one fires off the edge on the snap. Then it's three on three, no question. Nobody's going to help. And you're sending the back other side, so you would have two by three as opposed to sending him on that wide side of the field. So you know – you know, right away, if he comes, whether it's picked up or not, we're three on three out there to the left side. And the reason I say, you know, they only rush four. You got three down linemen, and then four others walked up, two on the edge. So there's five on line of scrimmage. And it's like the protection is sort of initially set into the boundary, I guess, with a chance for the quarterback to read it. It never gets checked because um, it's only five man protection. But you see what happens on it is boundary drops and then wide side comes. But still, now we've got five blocking three and, and nobody picks up the fourth off the edge. But quarterback takes care of it. It's a quick deal. So you're getting a little bit of an outbreak against man and rub route happening right here. We both kind of set it up with a hesitation. And this route, man to man, he pushes it up and would actually rub Again, when Austin Williams comes free to the back corner, and if you were able to hold the ball, you'd have a chance to throw it back there. Um, but you get that initial window. Will gets it out before he's hit, and this is a fantastic catch because the ball's a little bit behind him. And this, I think, is a quarterback who just really starts to get in a zone right here and works all the way backside after reading to his right on third and two short yardage, and they're going man. But they're only rushing three because they want to try to confuse your short throws here. So this is one. It might take a little longer. We'll watch it first. You got five out in the route, including the back. Comes all the way back to his left and completes to Ra Ra Thomas for a third and two conversion on a bigger play against man-free coverage. So a lot going on, but pre-snap already with the depth, and alignment of these defenders tells you it's man, and you see it when the back goes out in man line scrimmage, jumps hit him in man, and you got a free safety in here, and you go, well, is it really man free if they only rush these three down linemen, and then these two linebackers kind of drop? Well, yeah, I mean it's a particular call or a ta they're tagging it, trying to get somebody in the middle to, to even though they don't have a man responsibility, they don't want you completing an easy crossing route for a first down, so they try to throw bodies in the middle of the field. And watch what Will Rogers um, does right here and how he reads it. Initially, he goes into the boundary with two receivers side. He turns his head to the right. I think he looked at the free safety, turns his head to the right. And what's happening is he's reading man knowing I've got slant and flare. So he's going to flare and open this throwing lane on the slant. But... He can't go there. He's got a defender who's dropped into it, and he sees him clearly. So now he's got to come back and read the other side. The slant's not there. And he has time to do it against three-man rush. So Wally is running this you know, in-out little squirrel route where he's going to try to you know, turn his guy around and break back to the outside. Meanwhile, when he does that, you clear one out here to the outside with uh, the design of the route by Austin Williams and Ra Ra Thomas is one on one, going to push up, get leverage, and break to the inside. And you do have a safety back there, but remember that safety back there, Will is initially looking this way, so it kind of brings the safety over here, keeps him over here on that hash away from where he's going to ultimately throw the ball. So watch him. He reads linebacker underneath, takes my slant, turn my head, and now I'm coming to the other side of the field. And if you slow this down and stop it, you think, ball's going right here. First down to Wally. He chunks it to him right now. Nobody out here to stop him. It's an easy throwing catch. But I just think what's happening is he's got <clears> – he's just feeling it and, and senses and sees there's coverage here. He's going to run and open up the throwing lane. I got a guy coming open on the back of that who's beat his guy on the outside. Throw it in there and zip. Auburn DB kind of closes, but he doesn't get inside position. And this is just an excellent throw and catch in front of the safety on third and two. Okay, this is a third and six play. 
and a mesh route that's going to go uh, to Heath here. You're not going to get to see the culmination of the route and kind of how it develops because on the TV copy it's a tight. But what makes it happen here, they motion to three receivers, bring Wally over here. And so you're you're meshing out of a you know three by one, which is a little different, right? You're going to push out of there, and it opens up. So so Heath is not the underneath mesh; he's the one that follows at the next level, and that's where Will Rogers finds him back here in the middle of their zone after they kind of split off running with those mesh routes underneath. The protection, though, is what I'm impressed with the most. Now it's only a three man rush, but you see what's happening here. Auburn's adjusting to the motion. They bring an extra guy up on the line of scrimmage, and it looks like pressure with one walked up here, right? So everybody's around the line of scrimmage for Auburn. But nobody on the offensive line freaks out. And and even though, you know, it's almost like, you know, you got a guy for Auburn timing the snap perfectly over here. So this is what I'm watching. The guy who is not in coverage, I guess he's 55, and he's going to be matched up with Charles Cross. He's timing the snap here. Uh, almost perfectly, even getting a head start just a little as the ball's nudging. And so he's fast to the outside. Look at Cross pick him up. When you watch it in full speed, it's even more impressive. They're coming down here, jumping into the, let's say, man look. It's man to man. That's why this mesh gets Heath open like he does. But then he picks him up off the edge. And now, you know, there's a lot of guys going to lose this leverage right here. But this is a future first rounder who doesn't lose the leverage, just leans into him and takes his momentum with him right around a quarterback. And when you have a first rounder on your backside, this is what you do. You just stand in there and step on up and make the read. You never worry about it. And it's a whole different scenario when you're getting pressure. So the protection was a huge reason why State made throws like this. And then Malik Heath, a guy who had maybe been shuffled down the chart in terms of playing time, steps up after an injury to Ra-Ra Thomas and makes plays like this, run through a tackle, take it on down the field. He had some huge catches in the ball game, And um, – that was the longest pass play of the day for State, and it's a run and catch. You can see the man-to-man -man stuff working. That's why guys are running with receivers here. So, you know, check underneath. I guess um, this is Polk from this side meshing underneath with Wally coming across. And you've got defenders who are going to try to run with them step for step. And that's the purpose of the mesh is to get them open if they cross it. But they're uh, switching and, and kind of running with it. If, here's what I mean. Like linebacker picks it up, runs in front of Polk, and he's got one trailing him as well. See, so it kind of looks crowded, but you don't give yourself just that option. And then there's the man-to-man -man route where he's got a trailer and you know nobody in here to keep him from catching the football. And then it's an excellent read. Protection allows it to happen. And now what are you going to do? Run through one tackle attempt. Not great. And... Uh, turn it into a 31-yard play. All right, here's another touchdown, uh, first and goal, that I think you, you can chalk it up to a lot of things, including excellent protection on uh, against a three-man rush. They're dropping here, a little bit tighter formation, the ball in the right hash. The uh, uh, stick routes or you know curls against the zone, those short hitch routes, whatever you want to call them, you don't find the throwing lanes, a little confusion in the middle. But because the protection is outstanding, the quarterback can just do anything he wants to do. And so Will doesn't see it initially. You know, he looks back right here because you had outbreak Wally on top. I should have drawn it differently. Like he's on top, and then you have Incut looking for a throwing lane. And Austin Williams coming back right here with a throwing lane. There probably is one right here if he cuts it loose. But it is kind of crowded back there. You know, and, and I think it's a heads-up play by Will because you got such great protection against three-man rush. You extend, and maybe somebody's able to find a better throwing lane. And what happens, and has happened several times in the game, linebackers in the middle of the field who either would be responsible for underneath zone stuff, flat defenders who would be responsible in zone out here, or even in man, sort of getting lost and caught inside and leaving backs out here in the coverage. And this is one where, you know, once Will Rogers begins to move to his right, Dylan Johnson sees it, puts on the brakes right there, and moves to the pylon, and he's wide open. So you create it because of excellent protection. This was certainly a big play in the game. Not only was it the longest pass play in completion, a 44-yard completion across the field for Auburn, but it's the one that's actually going to injure the ankle of Bo Nix here and this would be his 18th completion of the ball game and he was at about 70 something percent completion at this point 
State is going to make it look like it's a five-man rush. Those four right there, three down, and then Aaron Brule and Tyrus Wheat. You're going to make it look like it's a five-man rush. But really what they're doing is they're sending Pickering across. They're sending Brule in to stab and get back out of there so that you can go two-gap twist here with Crumity. So Crumity is going to go from lined up over the left guard to twisting around linebacker and nose all the way to uh, right guard. And he comes free. He has to go far enough, though, that it does give Bo Nix time to get rid of the ball, but he gets him hit. And that's what injures his ankle right here. You're going to see that work. So on the snap, there goes uh, Pickering across, pick, gets the attention of the right guard and the center. You see Brule step in there and tie that up as well and then going to drop, and it creates the lane right here for Crummy to come around and pressure the quarterback. And like I say, Nix is reading it with the um, against the covers, those three safeties back deep, steps up, gets rid of it in time. And that's another part of this is there's Wheat off the edge, beating him, forcing him to step up into the pressure. And, uh, and then there's Crummity coming. The guard can't get back out there in time, and he hits him as he's throwing. It's a perfect throw, but a big 300-pounder falls on your ankle and breaks it, and uh, that's the danger of pressure on the quarterback right there. It's unfortunate for Nix. He's limping a little bit, and, and I should say now, and I've been vocal about it, this is a tough, tough individual right here. He's got a broken ankle, uh, no loser's limp. He didn't roll around on the ground acting like somebody shot him. He just kept playing, kept battling, and completed nine more passes in this game after he broke his ankle and even completed some of those for first downs. This is a tough kid that has every bit of my respect. You can see the play right here. It falls on it, and uh, he was never really the same. And here's one. I think it's maybe the next play or two after it. But you can see him back here trying to plant off that right foot and drive it in there, and he can't do it. Um, back when I played, I had a couple times where I experienced – pretty bad sprained right ankles and even that trying to drive off of it was miserable you can't get anything on the throw initially it's really hard you got to throw it all arm this one he can't push it and look at the ball sail on him you know that's one where right here if you're going to throw this if you drive it on a dead rope down at his knee uh, on a line drive he may fall and catch this thing for a touchdown but it sails on him he can't get anything on it it was almost a pick and so certainly it affected the outcome of the game because he couldn't run around and threaten you anymore due to what is a broken ankle and you hate it that his season's done for him. So the story of the game then is that led to this uh, field goal attempt for Auburn that Cam Young splits the guard and center, or the snapper there, uh, gets in there. He's helped by Crumity and Pickering and able to block that field goal attempt right there and hold him at 28 points, give the ball back to the offense, all the momentum for them to go take the lead. It's like you've seen earlier in the game on a mesh route, Makai Polk back of the end zone. Touchdown as they're meshing underneath. Will Rogers reads it quickly. You've got um, motion in for Wally. He's going to come underneath and mesh here at the goal line with Austin Williams on the backside. And so when he goes across, <clears throat> back is out underneath to the flat. That pulls linebacker out of the throwing lane. Polk pushes up and is that uh, – you know, in break, not a real hard slant, just an angle route. And again, it puts the pressure on that defender really right in here if you're going to read to this side. If he um, stays up, he's going to have – well, I say stays up. If he, you know, stays up and in, then you're kind of giving up this one-on-one -on -one throw, and you can see what the corner's doing. He's positioned to, to take away the fade. Don't want to give that up. He's giving – an inside release right here. So you're kind of giving that up if he stays up and in. However, you'll see as a play comes along, the design of the play, right there he's going with Wally, and that gives the throw. As soon as you see this movement, now Will Rogers is about to put this ball in there on this uh, angle route. But if he were to drop and try to take this away, then you come underneath and you're going to have some other high lows. You're going to have kind of a rub route right here. And if he's if he's not sitting right there, Austin Williams is going to come off and have a chance to catch a touchdown right at the goal line underneath. They're trying to make you th take the harder, more difficult throw. And because it's early and on time, he goes up and makes a catch. So <clears throat> this is something they were a concept that they were really good with. And Auburn couldn't quite figure it out how and 
and where they wanted to cover this down there in the red zone. At the risk of overstating it, I think this is really elite quarterback play right here in empty uh, in processing what's going on in the field and finding the guy. Uh, this is big time, okay? Because what you're going to see is um, they are kind of throwing you a kink in their coverage. It's still cover three, but making it look different with a corner up. And you don't get this quick throw right here or pump fake and go to the hole shot, which is what you're, you've got working, trying to hit the same thing you hit Calvin earlier in the game. So you watch him look. He pump fakes that, but something's different, and he comes off of it right away. And here's what's different. Like I said, they hit this earlier, right, where they pump fake this, and then you get him behind it before the safety can get over there. But here's what's different is they've got a third defender on that side, and he's actually a, a, a responsible for a deep. And I don't know how you call this or tag this if you're Auburn, but they're sending the safety back to the middle of the field. And I think anything deep on this side, this guy's going to be responsible for it. He's going to hand it off, and he'll be responsible there. And they are dropping this corner deep here on the backside, on the three-receiver side, but into the boundary with the ball in the right hash. That gives you your three deep. It's a different way to get to it. And you don't see it a whole lot. But I, I just notice how quickly Roger sees this, and he sees this, and comes off of it because you don't have that whole shot. But doesn't panic. Trust your protection. It's not there what you want to the left, and immediately it comes back. And now what do you have working here on the other side? You can see it's a three-receiver route, including the back, who lined up out of the backfield. And it looks a little bit like this. Release vertical from Austin Williams and push up into the middle of the field, which would normally affect the safety, but they've got a kind of a robber there. See, so it's really only four, uh, three to four underneath cover. I guess four underneath coverage kind of got a robber in the middle of the field. But then you get, because of a flat route or underneath, and curl on the outside, whether it's called or adjusted, you get a high-low over here with this corner, and the corner's dropping off. So that's just a lot to say. I mean, it's easy for me to see it afterwards, but what Will Rogers does in a matter of about one and a half to two seconds is he sees, and you can see him process it right here, he sees something different there. I don't have the whole shot. I'm coming back to the other side, three receiver side. Eyes in the middle of the field now. There's a robber in the middle. I can't go to Austin Williams' middle of the field. Now I come to the sideline, and i got to do it quick in about a half second. Now I come to the sideline. Corner has dropped. We can't see him. He's off the screen. But what happened is corner has dropped deep. That's his responsibility. Underneath, defender has run out here to the flat, to the running back, and has given up the throw to Makai Polk, who's cut his route off. He's running a curl, and he's wide open. I mean, that is one where, I, you know, as the play is snapped, I guarantee you defensive coaches in the booth for Auburn are looking at this thinking, we got him. And in about a second and a half, this kid flips his head and finds where you've got an open curl and you even get yards after the catch because of velocity and accuracy. That is, that's elite quarterback play. All right, they've got him on leverage, and this is going to be a quick toss to the left to Dylan Johnson right here. And I'm going to start it and pause it. Okay, so you're going, you know, quick snap, and a quick toss. Here's what I meant by you got him on leverage. The end man of the line of scrimmage is this defensive tackle that was on the inside of the tackle. If we wind it back and look at pre-snap alignment, right? So you don't have any – you've got a three-receiver side. Underneath, there's only two over those three receivers. In man with his hand down is actually inside of the tackle, and the next man is five yards, four yards off. And and so you don't have any edge defenders right here. I think this is as much a check at the line of scrimmage on alignment as it is anything else. So it's, to me, it's a little bit strange alignment for Auburn considering the wide side is three-receiver side away. Their front is not only positioned here, but so are their – Linebackers, it's like they expect if there's you know to be a run to come out this side, but they're not a big run team, so I don't know all I know about the alignment, but that's why they're getting what they get. And so what State's going to do is pull both guards in front, left guard and right guard pull in front, center blocks back on the nose, tackle blocks back on that guard, and you got easy leverage to uh, the field, and then it's. Not only guards pulling, but it's one-on-one -on -one blocking inside on receivers, right? So you just got them on alignment right here is what we're talking about. What happens is uh, guards up. 
this guard kind of gets knocked off by contact right here, but you get nice blocks from receivers one on one and you get to the edge. And this is something I was gonna point out. So in pursuit, watch the nose. First of all, turn and run. I think this is a tired player at this point. He turns, I think he you know, considers the running back's got it, loses track of him right here, and just runs right by him. You know, again, the ball carrier is cutting back, and I think it's a tired individual. Uh, the other one who is not doing a great job is on the cutback is here, the safety. If we track him, you know, he's trying to track it. He's right here at the pointer. He's trying to track it to the next level. And then when the cutback's uh, happening, he can't put on the brakes and get a hand on him. I think he's, I think he's tired. And that's what happens when you play a bunch of plays and you get tired of pursuit. Now let's have fun with this one and imagine what the quarterback Will Rogers is doing. Now, I don't know this to be the case, but I think it's possible that the call right here could be that same mesh route that has worked for them so well, right? And which would put you on the angle here and then up to the back of the end zone here. If that's what's called, it would be exactly what they've scored on prior in this ball game in these same situations down here on the goal line. So without knowing for sure, let's just say hypothetical, that's what's called because that's kind of what looks like what's called to me. Well, if that's the case, then let's watch here pre-snap, read, and check by Will Rogers. Looks out left. Now what's he doing? We saw this. Our vantage point in the broadcast booth, we are right up here off your screen. Well, way up here, up top, off your screen. So we're, we have the vantage point of looking right at Will Rogers and can see him right now. Look at Calvin and Heath all at the same time and make a check. And there's some sort of hand motion going on right here. Not real sure what it is. But you see that? He's giving him a, a hand motion and trying to disguise it from the defense. And while he's doing this, one thing to note is you got a defender here covering a slot who's not seeing that. There's no clue. He's looking at the receiver. If that check is what's going on, he has checked away from the normal mesh and instead is saying, you run the out, you clear off, I'll read the outside guy. If he stops, I'll throw the fade, but if not, we're going out route right here. And that's exactly what happens. Snap the ball. Uh, they adjust. Outbreak. Touchdown wide open. And if if I, again, go back and look, I think that scenario I just laid out is possible because the other guys run exactly what we said. He would push to the back. You're meshing underneath, and the back's out on that side. And so I think that was a check at the line based on pre-snap alignment. And that is a quarterback who is really confident pulling this off on the road in the SEC. This is a smart play here by a veteran player. Uh, safety Jalen Green transferred in from Texas. It's a fourth down punt, but, you know, eight-point game, getting later in the fourth. You can't stop the other offense. They feel like they've got a score. It's just heads-up play right here. Snuff out fake punt attempt. They're trying to sneak that up back out to the next level. And you got a chance if Jalen Green doesn't cover this. I mean, you're going to have a chance. Now, you got another guy making a play on it here in Bookie Watson from Maplesville, Alabama. But they got a chance to complete this if Jalen Green doesn't read it and come back and make the play right there. So just a heads up play. You snuff out a fake punt attempt. And now you got field position to extend your lead. And so this was, and so this was an outstanding throw uh, right here to Wally in the slot. He's going to inside release, then outside, but splits what our deep safety is kind of playing wide. And quarterback comes back to it, and, and Will Rogers really put it in there nicely. You know, it's four receivers and back getting out because they're only rushing three right there. He reading left, but you get one running with the, the corner running with the deep route and a safety over the top as well as left. So now he comes back to the wide side of the field where he's got an underneath crosser a back out in the flat, but Wally seeing the middle of the field open, I think is adjusted and is running up that middle of the field and saying, throw it to me. And there you go. Puts it in there. I mean, you just can't walk out there and hand it to him any better than that. You know, the thing about this is, too, again, you know, one safety was deep lined up there and ran over the top of a 
of a deep ball. So he may be out of position, right? Because you got a corner running with him. So he may have gotten out of position. Another safety deep right there, just opening up the middle of the field. I think Wally read it, but backside it was one on one, and in comes Polk, who he's wide open for a first down throw here as well. So whether it's a mix up or just state reading the coverage, and which is probably the latter, but you can't throw it any better than that, especially when you see it coming at you um, and kind of how he lays it in there. Again, outside, you know, he's going inside, but once he sees him jump it, just get free. And he does it. Polk really gets open, you know, on that break, turns a guy around. He's wide open. Be hard not to throw it to him. It's a much tighter throw, um, but it's a gutsy throw, uh, but an even better throw in between those safeties. See it now left, doesn't have over the top, come back, see him, put it on him. Big play. Okay, this is going to be the targeting here for Auburn. Uh, State up right now by 8, 36 28. There's still, you know, seven minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Second and 16. It was a second down play. So it wasn't like this was going to immediately get you off the field. They still get to run another play. But come in, able to get inside, sack of the quarterback. They got a big play, but it's called for launching at the head right here. And, you know, this is what I'll say about it. Uh, You know, yeah, okay. You go up, you launch head, you lead with your helmet. Okay, so this is what they're told to call. All right, so targeting. It is. But as I've said, these these are not the kind that should be getting a player kicked out of a ball game. You know, you if you want to have a rule about targeting and this kind of contact and, you know, in this situation it costs you a penalty and gives them a first down, okay, but – for a guy who's making a play like this, you can't throw him out of the ball game. We can't be throwing that guy out of the game for this. And if basketball can go flagrant one and flagrant two, then in football we can definitely go targeting one and targeting two. You want to call targeting, I know that satisfies the rule, but he is making a football play. You can't throw him out of the game for that. That's my opinion. And so after the targeting, what are they going to do? They're going to mesh, this time out of a different formation, but mesh underneath, angle route on top of it. But this time they're doing it with two backs, right? So uh, a little bit of a different look formationally, but still they're trying to man it and run with guys, and you get exactly what you've gotten before is here comes a mesh on top. Second defender runs with him, clears the throwing lane. We're going to angle behind it and hit that one-on-one. There's no safety back there. You go to him. Had Will Rogers not thrown right now on a high ball to Malik Heath, then what is going to happen, he's going to hang on to it, probably step up or, or find a throw in lane, and Malik, I'm sorry, and Makai Polk is going to come underneath, and and he'll catch a touchdown. So it's going to be one or the other right here. You go back and check protection. Yeah, protection was good enough, back helping, so you had six men protect. So that's you know pretty clear to me. This is touchdown one, and it's a matter of accuracy and catching it, or this is touchdown two. Uh, they had them either way. It's like tic-tac-toe, and State uh, extends its lead right here big time in the fourth quarter. You can see the whole thing working. And, again, you know, if you're going to line up against this and, you know, put – it's it's like saying if you're going to put bodies here as opposed to back here, then back here is where we've got a chance to attack, right? Because, you know, we're going to say, you know, if you get there and take that away, I'm going to come underneath and have somebody here because we've protected it. If pre-snap, you got bodies here and here, you're gonna take that away and say you're soft and soft. Well, we're gonna look down here and you're not gonna have as many in the box. We got two backs and we may check to a run right here on this particular play. So, you know, based on pre-snap alignment, you stick with it, you run the mesh, cross in the middle, throw it to Heath on an angle and he's got it. 40 unanswered points in the game. As impressive as the 40 part of that is, the 40, the unanswered points is also just as impressive the fact that the state's defense was able to start getting stops and got them consistently throughout the second half. 40 unanswered points, come back when you were down 28 to three on the road in the SEC against the top 25 team. I just don't know if I've seen anything quite like it. Will Rogers, he got as hot as a quarterback can get in a game. 44 of 55, over 400 yards, and six touchdown passes. And with two games left in his second year of college, 
He tied Dak Prescott for the most touchdown passes in a single season in Mississippi State history. And so staying healthy, he should break that record. Hope you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you on the next one.